How's it going everybody? My name is Will Robson. You can check out my work at facebook.com forward slash Robson Inc. Or you can go to Twitter and follow me at Robson Inc. So uh, what I'm doing is a sketch card um, and I'm going to do keeping the theme of my X-Men characters for whatever I'm doing now. I just did this gambit the other day. Um, and I'm going to draw a Jean Grey. Which I don't think I've ever actually even drawn her before, but we're going to see how that goes. Um, so, what I'm using is my uh, Kuratoga 0.3 lead uh, mechanical pencil. And this is the type of pencil that Todd Nock uses. A lot of stuff I do It's very influenced, traditional-wise, from Todd Nock. Um, and what I'm also doing is, uh, this month for December, uh, I'm starting a new tradition, which is a 17% sale off of all of my stuff. So, if you want to get... A sketch card or uh, a sticky note drawing or a full color sketch cover it's all 70% off with free shipping and that's because of Christmas time and happy holidays to everybody if you celebrate Christmas or not doesn't matter um, so yeah I'm doing a big sale so just go on my Facebook and you'll see all the information if you want to get someone a last-minute Christmas gift <laughs> and especially if it's drawn by me because I'm such an amazing artist anyway so I'm just gonna keep going on um, this uh, Jean Grey so what I wanted to do is have her look up into the sky and look, I don't know, angry and and sort of shocked at the same time. And it's kind of good to have just the general idea of the head shape you want to do to begin with. Just so you know a good place to start. Because generally I would not recommend starting at all by drawing the head of anything because... You should really start with the torso, because if you start with the torso, then you can know, um, you'll know the, uh, the proportions that you want to get. Because a lot of people, <clears throat> people starting out drawing, they start um, with the head, and you can tell, because the head's much bigger than everything else. Um, so if you start with the body first, then you can sort of see how big all the other limbs are going to be. And that's something that uh, I learned from, not personally, but from Jim Lee from a video, and he talked about that. Um, I'm drawing an up shot as well because I always struggle with them. So the point of these sketch cards is to improve. I'm just going to put a fake ear in there because I know that we won't see your ear because of her hair. I'm trying to get a bit tighter with these as well. So. That's a really long neck, but it's not going to be that long. Um, I've been thinking of the neck more as how it feels as, a, as the spine. And also I'm putting little dots down there as landmarks. Uh, there's landmarks all across the body. And I've been adding them recently into my work. Just so that everything flows... Um, the way I want it to. Well, I know where all the muscles are going to connect, like all the all the um, neck muscles. What she have she has a cut off around her neck like that. This is why I don't like starting with the head. I don't like adding the body onto it. Because the neck can either be too big or too small. It's quite a flat image. Actually, you know what? We're going to start that one again. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. The thing is, is like, I don't want to draw something that I'm, I'm not going to be into uh, drawing. Um, let's see here. What type of pose should I be doing? As I said, it's good to practice... Uh, Stuff you need to get better at, but at the same time, I've got to get to work. <laughs> so I need to uh, think more clearly about certain ways I want to draw stuff. Hmm. Okay, let's start again, shall we? <laughs> 
But there you go. You get to see the process of uh, styling something. See, this is just boring. This looks like a high school photo, and that's not. What I've been doing that recently, and I just don't like it. So we're going to switch it up. Down shot. Got my handy dandy electrical rubber, which gets rid of every little stain you could possibly want from pencils. And let's make our chin less manly. Drawing women, it's a lot different because you have to think about making their certain proportions a lot smaller, like the neck. Like usually, I would draw a big neck for most muscle-bound men, but for women, it's certainly different. But I actually like drawing women better than men. I don't know why, I just do... So I'm starting to do what Todd Knock does as well, where he draws the circles in. Because I just sort of can see the proportions of what I'm trying to do a bit better. Like, this is the chin, so I know that the lip needs to end just below there. And I don't know if she has big lips or a thin lip. I'm going to give her a bit of a thinner lip. And then I'm going to do, I don't know what, Jean Grey. I was thinking animated series, but I might, hang on, I need to get some reference up. I'll be right back. Just give me two seconds. Just give it back. So I'm pretty sure there's a bunch of different Jean Greys, so let's just have a look. I mean, I, I wish I had more of you guys in the chat so I could uh, see what you guys think. Which one I should draw? Okay, let's just Google Jean Grey. This is, again, stuff I should have done before I started streaming. It's probably going to be a bunch of movie images, isn't it? No? Oh, I do like the red hair and the green costume Jean Grey. That's definitely one of my favourites, so... We're going to do that one, which I believe, is that Dark Phoenix? I don't know. I'm not too big on, in, in the X-Men stuff. <laughs> you couldn't tell. I don't really know too much about it, but we're, we're going to go with that, Jean Grey. So again, putting down those little dots. And the thing is, it's like... I don't want to show too much of a neck muscle. I just need to hint that it's there. You don't have to draw every single muscle, otherwise, you know, every line you put down says that there's some sort of shadow there with some sort of object, but it's better to leave a lot of that stuff out. And then there's some masters, you know, people like Frank Miller, who leave a ton of those lines out because of the way the light's hitting them. There we go, this is going to be more of an interesting pose. My shoulder anatomy in there. Again, these little landmarks just let me, if I'm trying to quick draw something, really help with um, the quick drawings type stuff. That shoulder 
looking weird. And, and this here. God, I feel like I got drawers blocked this morning. Which is not what you want to do on a live video. Just can't seem to get down the lines that I want. I did just wake up as well. This is going to be covered in hair anyway here. This is when I get really frustrated because it's like what I've spent years, literally years, studying how to draw. But for some reason at this current moment, I just can't freaking do it. Which is always, uh, always fun. I have a book next to me with Todd Knock colours in it. Because I think he's got a Jean Grey in here somewhere. Just as a reference. Obviously not copying the complete image, just using it as an inspiration and a reference. I can't seem to find it anymore. Because uh, I forgot, does she have curly hair? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, I can't find that. Gotta give up. Uh, I gotta create my own hair first. So let's just put a hairline in. It's good to start with that. I'm gonna worry about because this body is not looking the way I want it to be. This is not good. shoulder back down. This is not working either. That's the thing is like I don't like to commit to a drawing like this. I don't like to commit to a drawing if I don't like it otherwise I'm not going to enjoy doing it and I'm especially not going to like it if um if uh sorry I lost train of thought there because someone's messaging me. I hope you're enjoying my video where I just forget what I'm talking about. Yeah, but anyway, I don't like to commit to an image that I don't like. Otherwise, I'm not going to have fun drawing it. And really, I'm trying to get recently back to the whole reason I started drawing, which was to have fun. So if I'm drawing something and I like it, and I'm having fun with it, then I know it's worth my time doing. That's what I've uh, incorporated into my client work. Because I've done a lot of pages that I don't want to draw. And uh, <clears throat> I'm trying to figure out a way to draw those pages I don't want to draw, but enjoy drawing them at the same time. If that makes any sense. As in doing something to the page that just makes it a bit more, a bit more fun. I think I made her eyes a bit too big, but let's bring this people down. Man, I am struggling, guys. Usually, it does not take this long for me to to do even the pencils. Do not know why. Okay, at least we got a freaking head in there. <laughs> That's one way to start. Okay, uh, let me just look through Google to see what her hair looks like. Okay, a bunch of different people draw hair in different ways. Maybe I shouldn't have chosen Jean Grey, but oh well. It's just like a sort of standard long hair, slightly messy look. Okay. I don't know, and every picture has her looking super serious, and I've got a picture of her smiling, but oh, at least it will stand out.
God, my Facebook is blowing up with messages right now. Sorry if you keep hearing that annoying buzz. some curls at the end of her hair. Been adding a lot of curls. If you've been seeing my Leave None Alive uh, drawings, I've been getting into drawing hair with a bit more curl to it. not talking as much during this bit because I'm still, a hair is still a crux of mine, it's still something I'm working on. I still find it hard to uh, get the flow just right. And if I'm doing digital, I'm fine because I can undo a bunch of the way I draw the hair, but traditional, just getting the hair down instantly right, I certainly find to be a challenge. Oh my god, my phone, shut up! rough thing of a hair. I still want to get a bit more difference going on in there. Bring the eyes shadow down a bit. Uh, and then the costume. Let's have a look. So she's got black around her neck. So this is all black. And then where's the black stuff? Closer image. Oh, come on, Google. There we go. So, goes over her clavicle. And to do a hint of the shape of her logo. Almost looks like a Wonder Woman. I don't know if this is this particular artist's interpretation. It's hard, there's nothing worse than when you're drawing a character you never draw and you sort of get their costume wrong. That's no fun. Okay, so these pencils are pretty much done. Uh, and about pretty much ready to move into the inks. Uh, 
I might make this a little bit Does she have... She does have pretty dark lips, so I'll just darken them up again. And this needs to be black. And then for a background, I don't know what to do. Uh, I'm trying to make the backgrounds a bit more interesting on these sketch cards. Oh, fire! Duh, I should use fire. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to move into inks now. Um, I've been doing, I'm trying to use different tools, but I think I'm just going to use the standards on this. Actually, no, I, I want to use some of the new stuff. This pen was recommended to me by John Rector. It's a high tech C pen, and this is a 0.3. It's a very, very, I need to get ink flowing but it's a very 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 small line so I'm gonna try and do that on her face and then the the strands in her hair well I need to get super close for inks but I'm trying not to get in the camera again I apologize for my phone continuously going off I guess I'm in some sort of text chat room. This wing looks way better than this wing. Um, I'll just keep that one colored for now. I had her lips open, but I'm going to shut them now. Okay, sorry for the silence there. I just need to focus when doing um, stuff like that. So, what are we going to do here? What do we got? Last night I was using point two. You can see I'm going pretty slow here. Actually, I think that needs to be a three. So I'm, I've been learning to try and do lots of thin, thick pulls with uh, a micron, a fine liner.
And again, I'm concentrating super hard here, that's why I'm silent. Again, apologies for my phone. I don't know why. Frig, it's blown up this morning. Just so popular. So again, taking it very slowly, with the hair at least. Because the hair needs a flow to it. And I'm still, I'm still super struggling, like there's still not a super flow to my hair. But this is why I'm practicing it every day, so I can get better at it. Okay, it's looking pretty good so far. Break down to a point two for the inside of the hair. So I'm using a three to sort of do the main uh, outside area. This is a bit different from what I've been doing recently. Because I've been doing the Todd Knock method. Not the Todd Knock, the Freddie Williams method and incorporating it into my traditional work. But it's always good to keep switching stuff up. Because you never know what you'll find. That might be the better result of what you've been doing. Guys are pretty silent in the chat. I haven't seen anybody say hello yet. There are people watching, though. Obviously different for people watching on YouTube. So I've been getting requests lately for tutorial videos, and I don't really do tutorial videos because I still don't think I'm good enough to teach. So what I like to do is hopefully you can learn through osmosis just by watching me, because that's how I learn how to do most of my drawing is. <sighs> I watch a bunch of YouTubers, of YouTube videos of famous artists just drawing. Like, um, I've slowed down a lot after watching Art Adams draw. Guy's a master. Because Todd Knock is like, and he's done. Which would be great, but he's got so much confidence and practice in what he does that he can just bang that type of stuff out. Where I, on the other hand, cannot. <laughs> but one day.
So even though this is a 0.3 and it can go super thick like that, I'm going to touch it ever so gently so I can get a much thinner line. And that takes a lot of practice. I've only, like this week, been more comfortable with pen pressure sensitivity on uh, a fine liner. Again, art's just a weird thing. It, like, you can open any anatomy book and it would say, this is how you draw a forearm or a head. And you're like, God, oh, I just don't know. I still don't know how to do it. Until that one day when you like, oh, okay, that makes sense now. It's just weird that our brains take a little while to um, understand what's going on. So if you're feeling discouraged, don't worry about it. I feel discouraged regularly. But my goal was to get better traditionally this year. And if you look at some of my older posts from the beginning of the year, I'm certainly a lot better than when I started. So hopefully that means next year I'll be even more better. Or even better, I should say. The problem with this thin to thick is you don't know how thick to go without making it too thick. So let's do, let's use a, what is it? Do I not have one? Where's my pig my mic cross? This one? I don't know how. Oh man, there's no, really any ink in that one. Okay, we'll just use a 0 0.05 uni pin. Too small. This is a point one. Curls of hair over here. Always scary when you're free handing in stuff. It'd be amazing if I didn't have to pencil or I could just go straight into inks. <laughs> That'd be amazing. I know Tom McFarlane does a very, very rough uh, start with pencils and then go straight into full inks. But he's told me fine. Okay, so let's go to point one and finish out the rest of these inks. I'm glad I went with this and not that. <laughs> I think this one looks a lot better. So adding a couple more curls of hair in there. And if this is 
black. I still want to show the shapes of stuff. So, like the clavicle. Clavicle merging into the neck muscles. I like it because it has that sort of shine to it. And then, and then, just the logo. Which again looks very Wonder Woman like. Some X's in there, so I know it's going to be black. Okay. And then I'm going to use a putty eraser to, what is it, if you want to know the exact brand? It's a fiber, well, I always say fiber castle, but it's Faber Castell, and it's just a kneadable eraser. And I like them because they don't rip up too much of the inks underneath because you don't want to lose all those inks. Oh! <laughs> God, I've got to be careful. That's why I like these live streams because you get to see like the imperfections of certain stuff. Okay, and then, so that was just a light erase, so you can still see all the inks there um, are still very strong, because a lot of rubbers bring up too much of the inks, and you kind of have to ink them again, which sucks. Uh, and then I'm just going to use my electric eraser to get all those extra details that I want out of there. And that, that this still doesn't bring up too much either, which is great. It's very, a very, very focused beam. So I still need to do a couple of things here. I need to get the rest of her eye shadow. This eye, again, is still way better than this one. Okay, and then I'm going to go back to my point three, little uh, pilot pen. To get her eyelid in there. Just slightly beefing up some of the lines of her eye. Some lines on here. To show that it's going into shadow. Okay. And 
then I'm going to do the black last there because otherwise it might blend in with all my colours. So there's the inks. Still not 100% happy. Well, you'll never be 100% happy with your art, but still not 100% happy with my inks or my pencils or <laughs> my colours. So, but this is, as I said, a lot better than what I have been doing. So now I'm getting my Copic colours out. Oh, I've got a ton of different colours. I buy 10 markers a month, which has cost me 20 quid. Because uh, I knew that if I put 20 quid aside for Copics each month, then eventually I would have them all. And I think I'm 60 away from having a full set of Copics, which is very exciting because there's many different variations of colours. And as you can hear, I do have a lot because it's taking bloody ages to get them all out. Okay. Side here. So what I got is my handy dandy colour chart I've been making. So as you can see, that's all the colours I have, and that's all the colours I'm missing. Because the problem is with Copic markers, like the colour that they show on the lid isn't really what the colour actually is. So or on their uh, when you buy them, they have a, uh, a a chart that tells you what each colour is. But really, you need to put it down on the similar type of paper that you're using, so you know exactly what colour you're getting. And it's great just to look at to see where I need to start with my colors. So let's start with her skin. And I'm gonna start, for some reason, I feel like I wanna start with an R11. So let's start with that. So I'm gonna put down a mid-tone color. And the reason I'm going with an R instead of an E to start with, because E is generally skin color, is because she has a lot of red on her so I'd like to keep that theme of red hang on just trying to dry out the inks a bit because I don't want them to blend into with the markers and stain my markers of Copics are very good like if you get a bit of ink on a Copic they do come out pretty easily the ink I mean on the Copic So I'm just putting some basic colours down to show the form of her face. And then I'm going to go back in with, let's see, it's a very peachy colour, isn't it? Um, maybe E00. Zero, zero. So now what I'm doing is going over all the colour but leaving just space for a highlight. But going over all of the other colour I put down because they need to blend together to create one sort of solid colour. Oh, I forgot about her ear back here. So let's put a bit of red back in there then. Right, now I need a sort of peachier tone to do the darkness with and E95 what's that I don't know how dark that's going to be no oh, that's good I 
and this is my sort of shadow layer. I don't want to put too much of this down, otherwise it becomes my mid-tone layer. Lots of shadow under the eye because they're sort of, they go in. I'm going to put a bit more shadow on this side of her face because there's more hair here. too much so I'm going to go back with my mid-tone or my lighter tone go over it a bit more to just bring that color back through nah. I think I've flattened it out too much because I used the dark shadow oh well I'll bring a bit of white back in there the gel pen. There we go. That brings the form up and back a bit. Okay, so that's the basic of that color. What color are her eyes? they blue? I think she has blue eyes. So let's just do a basic, a basic blue then. The base. And I need to put a bit more white under one of her eyes because this eye looks way bigger than this one. to put some eyeshadow underneath. It's like doing makeup. <laughs> there we go. Um, okay, so what I like to do with green, I mean blue eyes, is put a bit of green into them, but a bluey green. Uh, so I'm going to use a bluey green 2-3. And there's the highlight in her eye, right? I like to do the color on the darker color on the opposite of that. To show that it's the furthest away from light. So there's just a touch of that, and then I'm gonna go back in with another blue, which is a BO2. And just blend them in a bit more. Super subtle stuff, but I like it. That's the color I really wanted to put in there, doesn't it? Okay, she has quite dark lips. Um, so, and they're quite red, so I'm just gonna use an R85. I'll then desaturate a bit. There's that. And then it needs to get a bit darker, so that is a cool color, so I'm gonna use my cool grays. And this will just, if you put this over it, it will just desaturate that color a little bit. And then I'm gonna get the color back in again. And then what's the lightest red I have? Oh, zero, zero. Or oh, should I use a violet? I'll use a violet. Violet zero, zero, zero. 
I'm just going to put that over because that makes it quite neutral. There we go. I like, I mean, Todd Knock uses a lot of the white, but I kind of like bringing the white back in with a gel pen. And having a basic color underneath. Okay, uh, now the hair is very ginger, but it's sort of very a strong color. So I'm going to start with this RO5 here. Yeah, that's pretty much the color of her hair. Good. I'm a redhead too, but I don't usually draw redheads. This is a brand new one, I can tell. Actually, I think I got this this weekend, this color. So I'm just putting in where the shadows are first. The heaviest shadows, at least. Okay. So I think I have sort of the light coming from here. Um, just looking at my handy dandy reference of how people like to handle their hair. Uh, wow, that person's done his her hair super red. All right, I like it to keep it ginger though, not like dyed red. So I'm just starting with the roots. So what I'm doing is just wherever I think uh, the hair reaches a certain height, where it makes a bend of some sort, where it might hit light, I'm just leaving that space open. So it looks like there's some sort of highlight going on. There's really no rhyme or reason to this, as I said. I still don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> but I know it looks cool. And I know a lot of uh, people do it. Just where, like, I think the light's hitting. My phone has gone off the most it has since I bought the bloody thing.
I don't know why. I, I love drawing women the most now. I used to hate it because I used to find it the hardest. And now I find it easier to draw women than to draw men. But yeah, I used to really not enjoy drawing women. And now I, I don't really enjoy drawing men. It's definitely flipped. Okay. So, we got that. And then what we need is a good orange to go underneath, which I believe I'm going to use a YR04. Whatever that is. Uh, what are these 35s? Excuse me. It's not too bad. Let's see how it blends. Too yellow. So that's too yellow. That's a bit better, that's sort of more orange, but I still want to go a tad more orange. So that's more like it. And then after I lay this down, I'm going to bring in the shadow color. This is just to add a bit more ginger to it. It's going really over that other color, but too much actually, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to leave those white spaces pretty white. So I sell all of these, I do, I don't keep these, they're always for sale, you just message me if you want to grab one. Uh, they're quite cheap, I believe I sell them for £10, plus shipping. And as I said, I've got a 17% sale going on, so I don't know how much that brings that down to, I know it makes it cheaper. Okay. And then, do I want to bring a, a tad, do I want to bring like 21 into there, or th what was it, 35, no, it's too canary yellow, I don't want to go for canary yellow. I kind of like it the way it is, I just need to darken it. Uh, if I bring the colour back into it, I don't know if that will make it dark again. This is a very warm color, so I'll bring in extra warm gray to really dig in deep some of the back color. same. See again look this is advertised as that color red and it's not. <laughs> so you gotta be careful. Okay I like the way your hair is looking so let's get some. This is a warm three. Which sort of adds a bit of brown to it because it is slightly brown. I just want to emphasize that these bits are in shadow. And then what's really facing away from that. I don't want to add too much of this. It's the same as on a face. Otherwise, I'll have to go over the whole thing again. But 
just enough in the right spots to show depth. And then what did I use for the orange? Crap, I forgot, or the yellowy orange. It was 04, wasn't it? Let me take some of these highlights out. Okay, and then her logo is yellow, so we need a pretty standard canary yellow, uh, which I'll use this 15. Again, this chart I'm looking at makes it so much easier. Um, so let's just do this and make it one solid color. I don't have to worry about bleeding here because that's all going to be filled in black. Or I can make it a very dark gray, which is a better idea. And then that's quite a warm color, but let's make that go into a bit of orange, so. Let's see, 17. It just makes it look a bit more shiny, more like gold plated. Then we need to do the green of a costume, which is a very bright green. Uh, green five, I want to start with. There's not much to this shoulder here that I've drawn in. I know it's sort of spandex material, so it's quite shiny. So that's my base green, and then just do maybe a yellow green in there. Three. I kind of like to blend different colored greens because, you know, between yellow green and green, because then you get the most interesting depth of colors and then let's go to a yellow green zero zero because this is way more yellowy so it will look more like a highlight like that and then let's bring the green back into it and then just a slightly dark green just to show that color's fading. Actually, that's not coming through at all, is it? Um, there we go. That's what I was looking for. Now, the, all that's left is that and the background. So, I'm going to start by actually not making this black, but making it grey. This grey is so dark that you can consider it to be black. Though I do have X's everywhere, we'll see how this looks first. It is a cool costume, I mean the colour contrast on a costume is brilliant. The greens and her hair colour. stuff. Oh, got a bit of grain her neck. Yeah, I like that. 
that's better. And then I'm not making these highlights stick out tremendously, but they're there. bringing white into a costume a bit to show it's that sort of spandecky color let's bring a bit more warm gray warm gray jean gray Much better eyes Added a bit more shadow onto her face. And then background. I said I wanted to do fire, but that sounds like effort. <laughs> but I could try that. So, need some sort of orange to draw a couple of little flames. some basic flames <laughs> looks amazing um Thing, but I could always just spot it black if I don't like it. God, all these blacks, I mean these yellows have a lot of black in them. It's not terrible though, is it? No. Yeah, I try to add a little designy stuff to the backgrounds to make them just pop a bit more. That's fine though. It's better than nothing. Better than nothing. Right, so what card number is this? So I'd like to number them. This will be number 32. 
And let's give her the gold border as it's fire. I like to do little borders on these cards as well. They have more of a trading card feel to them. I mean, these are my daily warm-ups, so I still sell them at conventions. And people buy them, which is great because you know I do these just to practice. So if I can make money studying and practicing in the morning, then... That's A-OK -okay by me. Okay, so we got a nice little gold border now, and we're just gonna put thirty-two. And the final touch is adding the gel pen around the sides. Although I don't really need it because it's pretty white around her. You can barely even see the gel around her. Doesn't matter. Okay, that's that. So thank you very much for watching, guys. You can check out my work on facebook.com forward slash robsoninc or on Twitter at robsoninc. I'll just hold this up a bit closer to the camera. I'll take a picture of this and put it on my Facebook as well. Uh, now it's time to get to work, my proper work. But thanks for joining me with this again and watching my videos. Um, have a very happy holidays and all the best. Uh, see you later. Bye.